Hi there, in this video I wanna share with you some field recording tips for recording better sound effects, as well as some common mistakes and how to avoid them. And all of these things I'm gonna be sharing are from my own experiences that I've had over the past couple of years as a sound designer, going out recording things here around my house, but also going out and recording ambiences and other things outside and outdoors and as I travel, also recording there. So this is all from my experience. I just wanna share those with you and hopefully they help you to uh, just improve as a field recordist and just in recording sound effects. So with that said, I actually decided to kind of separate this video into kind of of three segments. One is going to be talking about like the hardware, the gear and uh, microphones and when, when it's best to use certain kinds of microphones and stuff like that. The second part is going to be about preparing for your field recording session and what to, you can do to best prepare for it. And then number three is going to be the, about the actual field recording session itself and how to get make the most out of uh, out of the session that you have prepared for yourself. All right. So with that said, if at any point you want to skip ahead, make sure to check down the chapters below to go to the part that maybe interests you. And with that said, let's start here with the first part of this video. All right, so when going out to do some field recordings, what microphone are you gonna use? What microphone are you gonna need? So um, to answer that question, I like to think about uh, what am I gonna record? And I kind of separate my cat, my recordings, my sounds that I'm gonna record into kind of two categories. One is gonna be my ambiences and the other one's gonna be like single uh, single shot uh, recording, single source recording. So think some, something, something like uh, footsteps or a dog barking or a car passing by, right? So anything like that uh, will kind of be your one shot sources or your sound sources and then your ambiences. And for those, we're, I'm gonna use different microphones. So let's, let's start with one, let's start with the sound sources. So for the sound sources, you can normally record them with just a mono microphone, just like a shotgun microphone, and that could be totally fine. Now, the issue with that is that if you record in mono, that you will not have the flexibility to record or to have it in stereo in post if you need it. What I opt in to do, what I opt to do whenever I'm recording any kind of sound effects, ambience or single sound sources, is um, I opt in to record everything in stereo. So that way, when I'm in post, I can always just sum everything together into mono if I need it. But actually my current recording setup now that I use is I actually use a shotgun microphone in the middle as well as uh, two, uh, two other microphones to get a stereo sound. So that way when I'm in post, I can either choose the mono shotgun microphone sound or I can choose the stereo sound or I can do a combination of both. So that's my current setup. That's what I currently do. But for the longest time, um, what I did is I just recorded everything in stereo and then in, in post, I could just decide to mono to sum it up in mono or just use the stereo recording. All right, so what type of microphone is best to record uh, these single sound sources? All right, so in terms of microphones, what I use is um, uh, omnidirectional microphones, and I would have those in an, either an X, Y pattern where they kind of line up one on top of each other at a 90 degree angle. Uh, if you can't do that, which mine couldn't for the longest time, what I would do is I would just point them both at whatever, as close as possible as I could. Uh, I would place the microphones as close as possible as I could at a 90 degree angle, and I would point them towards the sound source, and that's what I would record. Now, you have to be careful not to introduce phase issues and things like that. Um, it was never really a big issue for me. I'm not sure if it's because I used an omnidirectional microphone, uh, but I think if you use a cardioid microphone, you'll probably run into more of an issue with that, though I'm not I'm not 100% sure. I never used a cardioid microphone to do an XY uh, polar pattern setup, but that's what I would do if I had one. And actually, what I did is when I had my Zoom H6, that one already had a XY microphone set already set up. So all I had to do was click it on top and it was ready to go. I didn't have to like measure the microphones and measure exactly how they were going to line up. So I just, that's what I did. All right. And ideally, like I said before, shotgun microphone is, is really good because you can just uh, zone in exactly on what you want to record, point point towards it, and then you can get it. Uh, with omnidirectional and cardio microphones, you get a bit more of the room sound, a bit more of the ambient sound. So you do have to be a bit closer to the sound source that you're recording, uh, but it's still very much doable. And I've never really had any kind of issues with that, especially if I'm recording just around my house here. I can just go into a quiet room if there's some, a specific object or something that I want to record and then record it in there and then come back here and then clean it up in, in post. And it's never really been an issue for me. All right, so that's single sound sources. If you're doing uh, ambient sources, um, what I found works really well is to do an ORTF pattern uh, pickup. This is when you have both microphones at a 110 degree angle. It's kind of like a, a wide V. And basically you're getting this like wide stereo image. And that's what I go for. I'm not super, again, I'm not super clinical whenever I'm, I'm putting my microphones in a ORTF pattern. I don't measure the exact angle, though if I, if, if I was really strict about it, I would. Uh, but basically I want it at a wide angle so that I'm capturing as much of a stereo image as possible. And that's what I do. I usually use my omnidirectional microphones to do that. But yeah, you can do the same thing if you have cardio microphones and you can still get a good uh, stereo image that way. So for ambiences, that's the best way to go about just to get as wide of a, 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 a recording and of, a, of a stereo image as possible when you're getting some ambient sounds. And that's basically it. I don't recommend using like a shotgun for ambient sounds. It doesn't really, really make sense. Uh, cardioid or omnidirectional microphones are probably best. Yeah. All right, so now that we've talked about what kind of microphones we need, which ones we'll use, how we'll use them, uh, now let's talk about how to prepare for a recording session. 
So let's start with just the obvious and get these out of the way right away here. Number one, it's gonna be like, make sure you have your battery that's fully charged. Make sure you have a backup battery, also very important. Make sure that your um, there's room on your SD card or you have, a, again, a backup SD card that you can use if you don't. Another thing is make sure you have cables all packed and, and, and they're backed up. You have extra cables in case you need them. And a good practice is also to just test your recorder to just before, before you leave or you go out to record, just to make sure that it works. This can just be as simple as like turning it on and making sure that you can see that the battery's charged. You can press record to make sure that it's working. You can do a test, a quick test, and then shut it down and then go. So it's just to make sure that everything's in place. You have everything that you need to record. It's happened to me before where I would grab my Zoom H6, but then I would forget that I don't have the batteries inside or I would forget that uh, I didn't have room on my SD card. And actually, this happened to me recently as well. I was out on a farm recording and I, I I didn't know that my SD card was actually full and I had some some cats that were just right in front of me and they were making a lot of noise that I could have captured to record, but I couldn't because uh, my SD card was full. So I actually had to go into my recorder and kind of uh, and, and try to find some files that could delete. Anyways, it took me like five to 10 minutes before I could find a file that could delete to start recording the cats. So uh, at, during that time, I lost a lot of opportunities to record some good sounds, but it was a good lesson in just being able to be ready to record. So like I said, have your battery, ba have your battery charged and backed up, have your SD card um, emptied or at least with a lot of room and even have an extra one as a backup if you need. Have your cables ready, have everything set up and tested before you go so that you know that it's working. All right, so the next thing that you wanna do to prepare for your recording session is to actually have a list of different things that you wanna record, different ways you wanna record it and different maybe performances that you wanna get out of the recording. Now, if you're just recording around your home like I often do here, I won't do that because I know I can just go record it, come back, test it, uh, put it into my computer, see how, how it sounded, see if it, how it came out, if it was close to what I wanted and then go back and do it again. But when you're out on the field, outside your recording ambiences or whatever it might be, you don't really have the luxury of doing that. So having a, a list of what you would potentially need is super important so that you don't miss anything because a lot of times you can't go back and record stuff or, or it just won't be the same. It will be a different time of day. Uh, the environment won't be the same. So you just have to make sure that you're, you're really set up beforehand. And one of the things I would suggest to do as well is if you're planning on uh, doing a certain sound pack, let's say you're doing some sort of ambiences in a certain area. Well, um, what you can do is as you're writing out your different sounds that you're going to need different performances or whatever it takes that you're going to make also go and use something like chat GPT to get some other ideas of different performances that you might not be thinking about. Right. So what, one of the things I like to do, or the one of the ways I like to use chat GPT sometimes is I'll, I'll put in uh, something that I want that I'm planning on doing or that I already have. So let's say I have a set of three different kind of sounds that I want to get. Let's say I'm at a river. I'm going to get a close by river uh, river sound. I'm going to get a far or medium distance and then a far distance kind of river sound. And then after that, I'm like, okay, well now what else could make like a good kind of pack if I want to package this up? Well, what I could do is go into chat, chat GPT and say, hey, what would make a good sound pack Assuming I already have these three, what else could I, what else am I missing or what else can I include to make the pack uh, more valuable for whoever's going to be buying it, right? And then ChatGPT will give you some ideas of, of what to record, how to record it, different perspectives maybe. So there's a lot of, there's a good use of ChatGPT there and, and just getting ideas, generating ideas so that you, you don't come out empty and wishing that you could go back and like redo it because a lot of times you can't do that. So just having a quick list, having everything set out so that you know exactly what to record is going to be, is going to help you to be really prepared so that you can get the best out of your recording session. All right, so now that we have picked out our microphones, all of our recording gear is ready. We've done a prep, a prep list of all our stuff that we're going to record. Um, now it's time to actually go out and out into the field and record what we want to record. So now I want to share with you just some of the tips and things that I've learned out of experience in recording sounds, and hopefully these will help you out. So let's start here. All right, the first thing to be aware of is that microphones capture everything. Now, this might sound really obvious, but if you're a beginner or you haven't experienced this before, um, it'll literally capture any sound that you put in front of it or near it, especially omnidirectional microphones that capture everything around the microphone. They'll really capture anything. This is everything from um, distant planes, cars, even if they're like kilometers or miles away, they will still be pick able to pick that up, even if it's, a, if it's a, in a low rumble sound. So just be very aware of what's in your surrounding that is making noise. Um, a lot of the times I've recorded, even if it's just here at my house and I have like a fridge or freezer plugged in, I'll have to unplug it because that low, the hum from the freezer is actually going to be seeping into the recording. And then it's really hard to edit that in post or like to clean it up in post. And it's just better if it's not there to begin with. So just be really aware of what's making sound in your recording. And actually, if you want to see a, a whole video I did about how to get cleaner recordings and better recordings, I made a whole video about it. I'll make sure I put it in the cards above right here. Um, but yeah, it's so basically I made a video about like, 
uh, how to get the cleanest recording possible. And basically the idea is like, or one of the ideas that I talk about in the video is that you want to remove and reduce as much uh, noise that you don't want as possible and then increase or have as much of what you do want, what you do want to record. So in this case, our sound source, you want as much of that as possible, right? So uh, being able to separate those two things is really important. So just be aware of the noise that's in the environment. Maybe you have to wait a certain amount of time before you go out and, and record something, but just be aware of the noise that's in the recording and just know that it's going to seep into the microphone if, if it's part of the environment. Oh, and I should also mention here that um, one of the things that I learned uh, pretty quickly when I was recording just here in my house, actually, um, is that the microphone actually picks up every little thing from like your noise movement and also like your breathing. So what I would do when I was recording here, just a, a little tip here, is I would actually, depending on if I was in a really quiet environment or, and I was really trying to get some like soft noise or something like that, what I would do is I would like take a deep breath and then I would actually perform the sound that I wanted to perform. Let's say it was like a metal hit or a drop or just a, a swing or something like that. And then I would exhale after the, the sound was done so that my breath wasn't part of the recording because if not, it'll be part of that recording. So that's just a thing to be aware of that sometimes if you are doing like a handheld recorder th a thing that you do want to be able to hold your breath or like somehow breathe really quietly as you're recording something. Now, if you're setting up a, a recording, or your recording device, you're going to set it down and then move away from it. Then obviously that's not an issue, but just be aware of that. And another quick thing for if you're doing like handheld recorders and you're just going around holding your microphone, make sure that you are not moving when you're recording because sound tends to seep into the microphone, especially if you don't have a good shock mount system. But even if you do, sometimes it'll still kind of seep into the microphone where you'll get this like low rumble noise pick, uh, that the microphone is picking up. And usually that's from handling noise where you are moving the recorder or the microphone and it's picking that up. So make sure that I, either one that you have really good shock mounts or number two that you basically you just don't move, right? So uh, yeah, another thing to, to, to be aware of when recording sound effects like that. All right, the second tip when you are recording sound effects is to have, if you're recording like single source sound effects, this is not gonna apply for ambiences, but for single source sound effects, like footsteps or whatever, uh, or like a dog barking like we said before, what I always like to do is have at least 10 seconds of silence at the beginning of my clip. And usually that 10 seconds of silence will be your environment sound, your ambience noise. And the reason why I do that is because then I can take that in post if I need to and remove it from the entire recording if I, if, if I don't want it in the recording or if it's too high or whatever it might be. So that way I can get some really quiet sounds, some really quiet sound sources that without, without the ambience noise in the background. So that's why I do the 10 seconds of, of quiet at the beginning of the recording. All right, another thing that I do at the beginning of the recording is that I always label what I'm recording, how I'm recording it, uh, and where I'm recording it. So usually it's like what, when, where, how, and why. But so when I'm recording, I'll say I'm at this location, I'm recording with this microphone and this recorder, and it, the microphones are set up in this pattern. And I'll also label what I'm recording just so I know exactly what it is and I can label that, that file properly. So once I have that, that I, I always speak that into the microphone before I start recording so I know exactly what it is in post and then I can just easily cut it out and then edit it in post when I'm, uh, when I'm at home bringing that file in. Now, mind you, a lot of the times, if I'm just around my house, I won't actually do that because um, usually I'm kind of recording and editing in the same day uh, within even the same hours usually. So I, I don't need to do that because I know exactly what I recorded and how I recorded it. But when I'm out in the, the field, super important to do that so you remember what you're doing. Another thing to take into consideration here is uh, in my experience, like I don't go out and do like big field recording sessions where I take out multiple microphones and multiple positions and I just go out for like a week at a time and, and set up stuff and just record. Um, usually if I do go out, it's like for a day or two and um, I, it's a simple recording. Like I just have my simple handheld recorder set up. Uh, I, I, my microphones, I know exactly which ones they are, how they're set up. So I don't necessarily speak that into the microphone. But if you were going to go out and do uh, bigger shoots or longer recording sessions, a few things that I, you might want to consider uh, speaking into the microphone before you're recording. This can include stuff like your GPS location, uh, time of day, the weather, the environment, and, and what sounds are in the environment so that you can label your recordings properly afterwards when you're home. You also want, might want to label your microphone positions, how they're set up, and which microphones you're using in what position, how high they are off of the floor if you're on a tripod or something like that. Right. So all these things you'll want to actually say so that you have as much detail and information as possible into your in, in your sound file that you can label it later and just remember how you recorded it and why you were recording it and what was going on during the time when you were recording it. So important if you're going to do these kind of bigger shoots or bigger sessions. All right, the next thing that you'll want to take into consideration when you're going out to record in the field is going to be wind protection. Now, this is not really necessary when you're at home. Usually when I'm around here at my house, I don't have uh, wind protection on my microphones just because you don't need it. Obviously, I'm indoors. But as soon as you go outside, you'll probably want some sort of wind protection so that your microphones don't don't burst or don't don't have that low frequency rumble sound where they're just where the wind is just overtaking the recording session, right? So you'll always want to have some sort of 
well, in general, you'll want to have some sort of wind protection to protect your microphones and the recording. Um, unless it's, you know it's going to be like a really quiet day where there's absolutely no wind or nothing, and then you can record that. But if you're doing longer shoots or you're recording ambiences and you never know if there's going to be a gust of wind or something going by to, to, to blow out your microphones, it's just a safer option to always have some wind protection on. So that's usually what I do. I always have some sort of wind protection, some wind bubble or, or, or a pop filter or something on my microphone so that, just so that the wind doesn't ruin the recording. All right, the next tip that I have for you here is to do multiple takes of whatever it is that you're recording. So in general, if you're going to be recording, let's say like um, some wood chops or like you're chopping down a, a, a piece of wood or you're cracking a branch or something like that, it's always great to have multiple takes because you never know if there's going to be one that, that is going to be uh, ruined or just not usable. And you kind of won't know until you bring it into post. So it's always just a good idea to take multiple takes of sounds First of all, just so you can have variation in case you ever need it, but also because you never know that if a take's gonna not be usable. And a lot of the times that's what happens. A lot of the takes are not usable. Probably like 70% or more sometimes of what I record is just absolutely not usable. And I only use the 30%, but um, because I do multiple takes of what I do record, I'm able to have what I do want and what I do need and what I wanted to record. So again, just a little tip here, just record multiple takes of whatever it is you're recording so that you have what you need. And in line with that, uh, with doing multiple takes is always have headphones with you when you're recording. Always put them on so that you know exactly what you're recording. You know exactly what it sounds like. You know what your microphone setup position is. You can hear um, if it sounds good or not. You can hear if there's noise in the recording. This is just a, a general tip, but a really good one is just always have your headphones on so that when you're recording, so you know exactly what you're recording. And your microphones are always going to sound different. Every environment is going to sound different. So just having them on is just a really good practice uh, to, to, to set up and have a good recording session. Finally, the last tip I'm going to share here is to uh, record at the highest sample rate and bit depth as possible. And now this is more so for sound designers. So if you're a, a game sound designer or, or, or you know that your sounds are going to be used uh, to, for extreme pitch shifting in the future, it's always best to have it at higher sample rates and bit depth so that you always have the flexibility in post or in the future to pitch shift down, do extreme pitch shifting. And if not, you can always downsample it in the future. You can always bring it down to 48K, 24 bit, which is industry standard for like video games. And then you can go from there and use it from there. Um, yes, of course, if you're recording at 192K, let's say in 32 bit, your file size are going to be massive. They're going to be a lot bigger, but you're also going to have a lot of more flexibility to do the work that you might want to do in the future. So I always do that just to leave uh, myself options. But yeah, it's just a good practice to do to do that because obviously if you record something at 48K, 24-bit, there's no way to bring it up to 192K, right? It just doesn't work. So always best to have, have your options open, be flexible. Yeah, it might be a bit more work. Maybe it takes up a bit more space in your drive, but it's definitely worth it. All right, if you like this video and you like what I shared in this, um, I think there's another video you're gonna like that's all about editing and preparing your field recordings uh, to prepare them for sound, to use as sound effects or as layers in your sound design. So if you're interested in seeing that, make sure to check on the screen here or in the cards above. I'm gonna have it here, it's available for you. And if you have any comments, questions, leave them down below, I'd be happy to answer them. Thanks so much for staying all the way through to the end. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next video.